Welcome ladies and gents, Chris Andre here. You can find me at Bet Boxing on Twitter, or of course you can subscribe to the channel. Let's talk boxing. There's a huge fight coming up this weekend. The historic fight, an undisputed lightweight fight, the rematch between Haney and Cambosos, and yet so many people are not excited about this fight at all. Why? Because the first fight was so one-sided. What we want to do on this video is try to understand why. What did them and Haney do to nullify Cambosos. If we can figure that out, we can understand how Cambosos can stop that happening. And then you're talking about a fighter with his weapons. The entire fight looks different. Even the outcome might be uncertain if Cambosos can do certain things to stop Haney from nullifying him. So we're going to look at this like engineers. We're going to consider the process that Devin Haney used and then consider some aspects that Cambosos might want to bring to the table if he's going to be able to turn this fight around and then we'll finish off with a prediction. First and foremost, to understand this fight, you have to understand who George Cambosos is. In the build up to the first fight, many people were referring to him as a slugger, a swarmer, a standard traditional pressure fighter. And I used to explain to people that's not who he is. Cambosos is a very intelligent counter-punching pressure fighter. He wants you to commit with your attacks. And from there, he likes to react to what you're doing, jump in and throw in some ferocious combination punches. Lee Selby, the former world champion who lost to Cambosos, explained this in an interview to Ring Magazine. And he said, Cambosos has the ability to stop you punching because he always looks like he's ready to fire back with the right hand. That's the way he made me feel. I wasn't really looking to let my right hand go. I was just boxing behind my jab because I felt like if I did throw the right hand, it would leave me open for his right uppercut or the straight right hand. But Lee Selby was predominantly using the jab and didn't have success. Why was Devin Haney able to do so? Well, we know, like I said, that Cambosos is able to throw these varied counter punches that are very dangerous and his timing is what enables that to happen he'll wait for you to throw and he'll react to that and then lead with something big it might be an individual pot shot or it might be a variety of combination punches together so as you attack he leaps in he closes that range very quickly now moving on from that to try and explain this process via an analogy in old movies based in the classical world they often portray the great warriors and the great soldiers as swordsmen. You see these great battles occur on these massive plains and all these people are using incredible sword skills. The reality was somewhat different. The truth is the greatest warriors were spearmen. If you look at the Spartans, for instance, yes, they had a sword. Yes, you also had soldiers with bow and arrows, but ultimately they had shields and spears. They were masters with the spear. Devin Haney, is a spearman. In other words, he is most dangerous when you are at the end of the spear, his long rangey jab. The tip of his knuckle is the tip of the spear. George Cambosos is a swordsman. He needs to be able to get in close at mid range and let go of his very impressive sword skills. But if you were to have a spearman against a swordsman, the reality is the majority of the times in war, the spearman would come out on top simply because of range. Now, boxing's obviously a little bit different because one jab is not going to take out a soldier. One jab of a spear would, right? But nonetheless, the concept is one of distance. So because there is that big distance between the two fighters in terms of reach, when Devin Haney, who, as you can see from that photo, is able to really maximize that reach, he's not just long with his reach, he's able to maximize it. When he lands the jab, Cambosos then has a lot of range to close, and Haney's very good at pulling back out very quickly. So whilst Cambosos has had a lot of success against the likes of Lee Selby and Mickey Bay, who are very good movers, they don't have the combination of height and range with the ability to pull out quickly and the upper body movement, the bending at the waist of Devin Haney. We'll talk about that in a moment. The closing of the distance is a lot harder against Devin Haney than it is against other guys that George Cambosos has faced. In fact, there's no one in the division that does this quite as well as Devin Haney. You also have to look at the CompuBox numbers which make for some interesting reading. Devin Haney landed 78 jabs on George Cambosos. He actually landed 79 on Linares. But he also landed 136 power punches on Linares. He only landed 68 on Cambosos. On Jojo Diaz, he landed 154 power punches. Diaz took away his jab, and we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about what Cambosos can potentially learn from that. But ultimately, it shows you how few power punches Haney landed comparatively. And according to CompuBox, he only actually landed one power punch more than Cambosos, which is interesting considering people feel that Cambosos didn't land anything on Devin Haney. 
So in terms of power punches, he didn't land much at all. And it was interesting that when they asked Devin Haney on more than one occasion, what were you impressed by when it came to George Cambosos? On more than one occasion, he said his defense. He was harder to hit clean than I thought. He said this this week too, during fight week. Cambosos is very good at slipping and coming back, but he was unable to come back inside consistently enough to let go of those power punches. And when he was, he faced another obstacle, which we're going to talk about later. But you can see here what I mean about the distance of the tip of the spear. Cambosos immediately tries to follow him out. You see how he fell short there? That jab actually missed and Cambosos still couldn't quite reach Devin Haney. This is going to have, to, this is a one big problem he's got. You can see it here in slow motion as well. Cambosos again with his good head movement, his great timing, is able to make Cam Haney miss there with the jab. He leaps in with the left hook. He's just too far out. So he's going to have to find a way to get closer with his feet to be able to close that range and come back at Devin Haney to be able to follow him out. That's going to be one of the areas that he's going to have to work on. We're going to talk about various aspects of how he does that. But first, that's not the only issue Cambosos had. When he was able to get close to Devin Haney, one of the problems he had was finding the target when he was up close. As you can see here, Devin Haney has a habit of ducking below the belt line. Now, this is actually not allowed. It's an illegal tactic. You should be warned for doing this. And if you persist, you should have points taken away. You are disengaging. It's no different to putting your head out of the ropes. You can see here from David Haney's head, it's below the belt line. You can see it here as well, below the belt line. And in the third picture, now these are just three examples. But the point is, he makes himself a very small target and he gets away with it. When was the last time you saw a referee pull up a fighter for ducking below the waistline? When was the last time he said, I'm going to take a point if you keep doing it? So although you're not allowed to do it, fighters get away with it. So what's Cambosos going to do? Just accept it and then lose and then complain afterwards? Or do you have to try and find a solution? Well, we'll talk, like I said, about the solutions. But one of the issues he had a problem with as a result of this was the level change of Devin Haney before he would initiate the clinch. You know, we just spoke about how many jabs Devin Haney landed on Cambosos. There were 78. Well, I want you to consider this. The Australian media were interviewing Cambosos about the holding, which he has complained about. And... They put it to Cambosos that there were 59 clinches in this fight. You know, were you unhappy with the referee? And Cambosos said, listen, no excuses. The referee did allow an awful lot of holding, but we've got to deal with that. And he's right to have that mentality that he's got to deal with it. But did you know 59 clinches? That's five clinches around on average. Well, there were 6.5 jabs around for Devin Haney. So think about that. A lot of this was portrayed as death by a thousand jabs for Cambosos. Well, it's almost like death by a thousand clinches too. You see, even there, that jab missed, the second one missed, Cambosos tries to close the range, and then Devin Haney ducks and takes it away from him. You get the same thing again here. Jab, he slips it, then look at that thrust with the shoulder. He's looking to break the construct of Cambosos or to nullify him, to tie him up completely, to stop him because he knows Cambosos, he, that jab actually missed again from Haney, and he knows Cambosos wants to come in close and let go of combinations. So Haney stops him there, he's practically hugging him and wrestling him. He's stopping him from being able to let go of his weapons. So what does Cambosos have to do? Yes, you need to complain to the referee. The referee needs to stop these clinches. He needs to stop the ducking below the belt line. He needs to warn him. He needs to take away a point. But what if he's not going to do that? Do you just accept the defeat? Well, first and foremost, Cambosos was far too accepting of the clinch. Here, look how accepting he is. He's not looking to fight back. And this bit's actually funny, actually, because the referee tells off Cambosos for, for leaning on him, which is not something he was doing, but something he should be doing. Cambosos there. Did you see that? He led with a left hook that landed. Haney came low instantly and tied him up. He put his forearm on the back of the cervical spine of Devin Haney. And instead of leaning into it and making him carry his weight, he let him go. Don't do that. Learn from Vladimir Klitschko. Lean on him. Make him carry you with his legs. Let him take all that weight. If he starts to tire down the stretch in the championship rounds and he's not as fluid and he's not moving as well, we've seen him tire a little bit against Linares and against Jojo Diaz, that's where you can potentially have your success. So one area is to lean on him. Another area is to use head control, which we're going to talk about later. Do not allow him to close that gap on you. The third area is to pivot as he tries to dip down to before the thrust of the of the initiation of the clinch change the angle on him we'll get to all these points later on but the point is the biggest issues that he had 
were number one, not being able to bypass the jab as effectively as he would have liked because of the length. And number two, when he did get inside, largely speaking, he wasn't able to land as many power punches as he would normally land. There's the first one lands, then the others don't, because Devin Haney was so effective at clinching him. So you have to find a way to stop the clinch. That's not the only issue that Cambosos has. He's got this willingness because he thinks like a boxer, a counter punch and pressure fighter, rather than a swarming pressure fighter that wants to be all over you and make you work every second of the fight, he has this willingness to reset and come back to the end of the spear. I want you to look at this here. So he lands that left hook after the Haney jab. Then as Haney's not really got his construct beneath him, did you see how Cambosos willingly got back on the end of the outside of the Haney jab? And then he slipped it, he won that combination. He slipped the jab and landed a jab to the body. But you're coming back to his zone there again. He steps around him. In fact, let's pause a couple of these and talk about this in a bit more detail. There's the left hook. Now, Devin Haney's not in a comfortable position here. This is a good position for Cambosos. The right hand comes in. Devin Haney's now is trying to retreat and reset. His hands are out. His feet are squared up, it looks like, from this position. He's not in a good position. Cambosos needs to follow him. That second phase of attack is key for Cambosos. You've entered the first point. You've, re you've piped past the jab, the tip of the spear. Now is when you use your sword. Now is when you start to fight this guy at mid-range. Instead, look how he's happy to stand off and he gets back into that typical stance. Low, languid lead hand, cocked right hand edge of the spear. Devin Haney's fine now. He's reset. You see that? Now Devin Haney throws the jab. Again, Cambosa slips it, lands a jab to the body. Brilliant. Are you going to come back upstairs now and work your way back in? No. He pulls back out. He resets to the edge of the spear. You see the problem that Cambosa has got here? Again, he misses the jab, Haney. Another jab to the body from Cambosos. Now, the commentary team aren't even talking about this, by the way. Cambosos was doing some good work, but it was inconsistent. And we look at this exchange here. Outside, Cambosos posturing, looking, waiting for the moment to come inside. There it is. He gets inside. He, he turned his head slightly off of that jab. Comes inside, lands the jab. Now he steps around. Why is that back foot spinning around here? Why isn't he stepping back in immediately before Devin Haney can pull back up? Make him work in this position. Lean on him if you have to. If you don't want to exchange, if you're worried he's going to come up with the uppercut, which is something he likes to do, dip low and then shoot up with a lead uppercut, a backhand uppercut, that's fine. But then lean on him. Close that range and lean on him. Make him carry you. Stop disengaging and getting back on the end of the spear. Here he is again. End of the spear. Puts up a high guard. A high guard is how Jojo Diaz found a way to walk Haney down. He's put up a shield via that high guard, but he's applying pressure with forward momentum. And so that he's making Haney work. And Haney was just touching the, the guard usually and then whipping a power shot downstairs. As the fight wore on, Jojo was able to keep getting his feet up close. And then he was able to lead with his own power shots. Here, Cambosos puts up a high guard, but shows no willingness to step inside so he goes back to his regular level of trying to counter what Haney's going to throw there's a jab to the body which falls short and Cambosos is instantly looking to counter with a wide left hook he misses Haney steps back out Cambosos is content again to be on the edge of that spear out of range waiting for Haney to make his move and then as he steps in he falls short and we'll talk about that later as well but here you see Devin Haney throw a jab which barely touches the forehead of Cambosos and look at Cambosos is posturing waiting waiting there finally Devin Haney leaps in with a left hook it lands on the bicep of Cambosos not a scoring shot but then he initiates the clinch again so this is the problem that Cambosos had he was too willing to have to try and bypass the edge of the spear then when he got into a good position he often willingly gave it up when he wasn't willingly give, giving it up and Devin Haney was in theory breaking rules by getting below the belt and then initiating a clinch Cambosos had no answer for it he didn't know how to stop that happening and that's a major problem for Cambosos. He's also got one more problem. When he's at the end of that spear, the weight distribution of Cambosos actually enables a tell to be read. The way he launches into an attack is something that someone like Devin Haney picks up on. So when Cambosos is looking to slip that jab, I've shown you a series of examples of him slipping that jab, but make no mistake, Devin Haney, like I said, landed 78 jabs. He had a lot of success with the jab. And one of the reasons he had a lot of success with the jab is this little tell that Cambosos has also got on the outside. You see how he's leaning his foot on that, his weight on that front foot? He's just leaned it forward. He'll then have a little hop as he's looking to launch forward. That left foot will come forward as he looks to jump in. There. As you do that, Devin Haney knows here comes the entry point. And from there, he's able to take half a step back. We're going to see it again 
There he is on that front foot. There's the hop. Devin Haney's able to spot it and step back. Now here you'll see it with the jab. You see Cambosos has lent his foot, his weight onto the front foot. Bear in mind, this is something Canelo Alvarez does, but Canelo's a lot more unpredictable with it. He'll lean forward and then faint, which will make Devin Haney either throw a jab and Cambosos should pull back from that point, make the jab fall short. He'll then come inside Canelo Alvarez, again, lean forward and then throw the jab or lean forward and as he's pulling out, he'll throw the jab. He's varied and it makes you unable to read the tails. Here, Cambosos has shifted his weight onto his front foot. Devin Haney knows he can't quite reach him here. The moment Cambosos is going to look to take that foot off the floor to step in, Devin Haney's going to shoot the jab. There, just as his foot came off of the floor. Now, what this does, not only does it land the jab, but because Cambosos' feet are off the floor, there's going to be a slight reset. So Devin Haney's going to be able to exit, just lean back, and as Cambosos seeks to shoot that right hand because he just planted his foot where he landed it, he's too far out. He's not close enough. Now, he doesn't usually have a problem with this against other opponents because it goes back to that idea of distance. If you're going to lean your weight onto your front foot to basically lure a guy into throwing a shot for you to then jump in or for you to surprise him from there and jump in, you have to be close enough to already be able to reach him. If you're out of range when you're leaning your foot, your weight onto your front foot, your mobility becomes limited. And for a guy who's capable of pulling out as quickly as Devin Haney, you're basically preparing yourself to launch when your feet are far too far out. Now here, because he's got his arms raised, it's fine if he's gonna enter in this way. And you can see his feet are a lot closer. So this is a good position now for Cambosos. He wants to be in these positions a lot more. This is good. The problem he has here though, is that he is frustrated and he's trying to launch big looping wide shots to the head of Devin Haney trying to take him out he needs to tighten the arc of his punches at this point here and we'll talk about that later on in the video but the point is regarding his foot positioning this is the sort of area he needs to get into now in this particular case because he's so wild and erratic because he's frustrated and he's going to try and launch this big over the top shot Devin Haney's going to do what he always does in this sort of position and dip low and then pivot out and you see again here, Cambosos is leaning his weight onto his front foot. He's too far out. And he's going to try and launch himself in with the jab. There, falls short. Devin Haney changes the levels and then gets out. So what can Cambosos do? Well, there were moments in the first fight where he did have success. And that success came as a result of him applying incessant foot pressure, using head control to create that separation when Devin Haney would try to tie him up. And when Devin Haney would seek to thrust forward from that back foot with the shoulder in order to initiate the clinch, Cambosos was in a position where he was able to turn, to pivot out. And that would require Haney to reset. You see here, there's the head control, there's the chopping right hand down. That's the other thing he needs to do. Throw the right hand in a chopping down fashion to the back of the head or the back of the ear. What, it's illegal? So is ducking below the waist. So is trying to initiate a clinch. Let the ref warn you. Turn it into a dirty fight. There's the head control chopping right hand again. This time Devin Haney looks uncomfortable and he's able to initiate the clinch. Lead left hook there from Cambosos pushes Devin Haney away. That requires a lot of physical exertion. You can't keep pushing him away like that. But the point is, if you're able just to use that head control there, and there he is pumping his fist as, at the end of the round as he moves towards his own corner because he's able to stop that initial clinch. There he just turned him. The thrusting movement of the shoulder of Devin Haney requires a straight movement. It requires a lineal uh, push-off. So by turning around at the shoulder, let's go back to that to show you there, he, Haney needs to push forward through there. So here, as Cambosos pivots out, look at the position he's in able to land a short right hand there. Here you see him literally bum rush Devin Haney, but look how uncomfortable he makes Devin Haney here. Haney lands a body shot, Cambosos throws one that misses, he shifted his stance just to get in, he just wants to get in, lands his own body shot to the ribs there, and then basically throws Haney on the floor. They've landed a body shot each there, there's Haney's, there's Cambosos's, Cambosos comes in with a second body shot there and then throws him on the floor. Make him uncomfortable. If he wants to initiate clinches, throw him on the floor. Here he's holding his hand and continues to throw. What can anyone say to you? You're dirty? Devin Haney's very dirty as a fighter. It's a fight. You have to be willing to go through that. You have to be willing to be dirty. But use your foot pressure with short and narrow fast steps forward and use your head control to stop him from being able to initiate the clinch. If he wants to shoot the clinch, like there again, turn him, pivot out, turn him. Do not allow that lineal progression of the shoulder as he tries to push off. 
If George Cambosos can do these things and put himself in a position where he is exchanging a lot more frequently up close, he could potentially wear Devin Haney down. What he doesn't want to do is be on the outside for too long, resetting on the end of the tip of the spear, getting his face jabbed off, just so he can sporadically get inside and most of the time get tied up and then every now and then not get tied up and do good work like this. That's not going to do anything apart from get you losing the fight on points. You have to make Devin Haney worried about dipping. If you can stop him dipping and you can stop him clinching, well, then it becomes potentially a completely different fight. He should also tighten the arc of his punches. Not everything has to be this big swinging shot where he's looking to take a guy's head off. He was doing that an awful lot because he was getting frustrated. Devin Haney's seeing those coming from a mile off, but these little shorter shots, tightened arcs, especially to the body. But even here, you see a little left hand there and then a straight right hand down the pipe. These straightened shots with shorter arcs will find a much better target on Devin Haney rather than the big wide ones. You can use your wide left hook when he ducks to the side, but generally speaking, tighten the arc of your punch. Punches. Now, can this work for George Cambosos? So can ferocious Cambosos be a nightmare for the dream Devin Haney? Unfortunately for George, I think whilst he does have the physical attributes and the biomechanics to be able to implement the sort of style that I'm talking about, you're asking a fighter over a very short space of time to switch between being a counter punch and pressure fighter who's very good at mid range to being a swarming pressure fighter who has a very adept inside game. I just don't think he would have had enough time to work on this. As a result, I think the most likely outcome is Devin Haney to win the fight again on points, although I do think this will be a more exciting fight than the first let me know what your opinion is ladies and gents please don't forget to hit a stiff jab on the like button a right cross on the subscribe button and an uppercut on the notifications button thanks for watching take care god bless